Hi there, welcome to my video and as always, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to try to be a little bit of help in the world of trigonometry. This one can be a little bit tricky, one or two new formulas to learn, but there are things to help us along the way. As always, I'm going to start with the basics and work through to some examples. I hope you do find this useful, thank you. So let's start at the very beginning. What we need for this topic is a right angled triangle. Any other triangle will not do, it has to be right angled. Once we have this, we need to learn to be able to give each side of the triangle a name. Now the way we do this is to look at a question, look at what you're being asked for, and first of all, decide which angle it is that you are working with. That shouldn't be too difficult because the angle will be marked. Now, if we are, as in this case, working with the angle at the bottom here, we use this to name the three sides. Now, one side that is always the same name is the longest side. That is the hypotenuse. You may have come across that if you've been working with Pythagoras. Now we have to decide which of the two other sides have which name. And we do this by looking at the angle that we're working with. So here, the bottom angle, the first side to look at is the side which is opposite the angle. It's on the other side of the triangle. And that's why we call it the opposite side. That gives us only one side left. It is the side that is in effect next to the angle. And this side we call the adjacent side. So three sides, we have hypotenuse, adjacent and opposite. And in fact, once we've named them, we are actually, as we go along, going to use the initial letters of each of these sides. So there will be an H, an A and an O, and this is what they stand for. Now let's just clarify the namings of these by working with the other angle. So now we have a question where we are working with the top angle here. Now, as I said before, the longest side always has the same name. So hypotenuse stays where it is in all cases. But this time, because the angle is up here, the opposite side is across the other side. Therefore, for a question like this, this becomes the opposite. Therefore, the adjacent side is the remaining one. So you have to look at which angle am I using. That will tell you which side is opposite and the adjacent is the third side. I guess the next step would be to explain why we need to learn these. Well, with trigonometry and knowing these names and a couple of other skills, we can work out a couple of different things. If in a question we are given the lengths of any two of the sides, it doesn't matter which two, as long as we are given two lengths, we can follow a process which allows us to find the size of the angle. On the other hand, if we are given the size of the angle and one length, we can find out the other lengths. In order to be able to do this, we are going to have to learn three new words. And those words are sin, cos and tan. Now, actually, each of these words is the shortened version of a longer word. A sin is actually a sine. Cos is actually short for cosine and tan is for tangent. So if you do see these versions, the whole word, that's not a problem. It isn't really important that you learn the larger word because for these types of questions, you are going to be using your scientific calculator. And there are three buttons on there. One is sin, one is cos, and one is tan. Depending on which side you are given, you need to take the question in a slightly different direction. So let's assume to start with that we are given the length of the opposite side and the hypotenuse. If we have the O and the H, and this is something we're going to learn shortly, we need to be finding the sine. Because to find the sine of X, we take the opposite and we divide it by the hypotenuse. The opposite divided by the hypotenuse 
gives us the sine of x. And you will find on a cal calculator that may be a very long decimal number. It may actually be that you are given the length of the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So this time we don't know the length of the opposite. If we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, we have to find cos x, the cosine of x. This time we take the adjacent and we divide it by the hypotenuse. So a divided by h gives us the cosine. A little bit confusing so far. We'll find a way to simplify this in a few minutes. Let's look at the third option. And that is where we are given the adjacent length and the opposite. We don't have the hypotenuse. In this case, when we have an a and an o, we are looking for the tan of x. And we do that by taking the opposite and dividing by the adjacent. So I actually have three little formulas here. Sine of x is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine or cos of x is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan or tangent of x is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Obviously, it's a little confusing because you need to be able to remember whether we are looking for the sine, the cosine, or the tangent. Thankfully, we have a little tool which helps us to sort that out. And the tool that helps us is this word. Looks a little bit strange. We pronounce it Sokotoa. It is really important that you learn this word and how it is spelt, because this gives us the clue as to whether we are looking for a sine, a cosine, or a tangent. So, Sokotoa is the word, but how does it work? Well, quite simply, we are going to divide it into three sections. So we have one, two, three sections here. So Sokotoa has the so, the ka, and the toa. And these letters relate back to what we've just been doing on the previous page. S is sine. So we have sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. S is opposite over hypotenuse. The middle then must be cos, and that is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, C-A-H. The third one then must be the tan, and that is the opposite over the adjacent. So getting used to this word and how it works, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. This gives us the three formulas that we need to work out the angle. Let's have a look at an actual example as to how this works, and then we'll take a look at how we finish the question off. So here we have a very typical question. A right angled triangle, we have the angle x, which is what we are being asked to find, and we are being given two lengths. So we know the lengths of two of the sides of the triangle. The first thing we need to establish is which of the two sides have we been given? Well, it's not the hypotenuse. That is always the longest side, and that is being left blank. Therefore, it must be the other two. So let's figure out which way around they are. The angle we are dealing with is down at the bottom here. So if we look at the side of the triangle that is opposite, then that must be the opposite side. So we have O. The third side, the one that runs along the side of the angle here, is A. It's the adjacent side. Once you have established that, we then use our favourite word, the Sokotoa. Because this word is now going to tell us which of the formulas we are going to use to find angle x. We need to look along the word and figure out where the opposite and the adjacent come together. And if we split it into three parts again, we can clearly see that the O and the A are together, in this case, right at the very end. That tells us that for this particular question, we are working with the tangent. Therefore, the formula that we're going to use is the tan of x, and we know that that, from the word here, is the opposite 
divided by the adjacent. And that's exactly what we do. We divide 6.2 by 12.1. If we do that on a calculator, the answer we get is 0 0.512 three nine six six nine four two and for the moment you need to write that all down now what you have found is the tangent of the angle x we now need to understand our scientific calculator to take the question a little further now there are of course different brands and models of scientific calculators so it is important that you understand your own here I've got an image of part of the keyboard of a very common scientific calculator. And you will see straight away that three of the buttons here are sin, cos and tan. So if you put any number into the calculator, you can use these three buttons to find the sine, the cosine, the tangent. If you recall the question that we are dealing with at the moment, we already have the tangent. We want to process that backwards to find the size of the angle. Now this is where we take a closer look at these three buttons because above them on the actual body of the calculator itself are three more functions. Just to enlarge them, the first one says sin to the minus one, the second one says cos to the minus one and the third one tan to the minus one these are the opposite functions we use the main buttons to turn a number into a sine cosine or tangent if we already have the sine cosine or tangent we use the top functions here to find the size of the angle and you would use these functions by firstly pressing in this case the shift button. Again, I must emphasize, do check out your own scientific calculator to see exactly how this works. But here, it's the shift button. So if I press the shift button, it means the sin button becomes sin to minus one, the cos becomes cos to minus one, and so on. Let's go back to our question. If you recall, we have used the opposite and the adjacent opposite divided by adjacent and that has given us the tan of x we already know the tan i am therefore going to use tan to the minus one to reverse it so that the tangent becomes the size of the angle now to do that i press shift i press the tan button and then i type in this whole number and if i do that rounded to the nearest one decimal place I will get 27.1 and that is the size of the angle let's do another example so once again we have a triangle it's right angle at the bottom corner here and the angle that we are looking to find is x up at the top and again we are given the lengths of two sides so Let's establish which sides. Well, in this case, we have been given the length of the longest side, and we know the longest side is the h for the hypotenuse. The side that is opposite the angle this time would be the bottom side. It's on the opposite side. We don't have the opposite. Instead, we are given the third side, the one that runs down the side of the angle. So we are given the adjacent. Again, let's write out our word. So again, we've got Sokotoa. This time we have an A and an H. We are looking to find the A and the H together, split it into three parts. The A and the H are here in the center. So this time we are working with cos. So using the formula to find cos X, it's going to be A divided by H, A divided by h. So that is what we do. We go 6.2 and we divide that by 
12.5. 6.2 divided by 12.5 gives us a slightly shorter decimal this time. It is simply 0 0.496. Don't forget, 0 0.496 is cos of x. Therefore, to find x, we now need to do cos to the minus 1. So again, hit the shift button, then hit the cos button, and on the screen it now says cos to the minus 1. I type in 0 0.496, and I get the answer, 60 point, again, I'll round it to one decimal place, 3 centimetres. So that is the angle of x, 60.3. So that's how we work it out. We look at the angle, we decide which two sides we've got the lengths of, we follow Sokotoa, and we divide the appropriate sides. That gives us either the sine, the cosine, or the tangent, and we reverse that using our scientific calculator to find the size of the angle. The other situation we might have then is where we are given the size of one of the angles and the length of one of the sides. We may be asked to find a second length. Let's have a look at one of those situations. So here we are again with a right angle triangle. A little bit different this time in that now we are being given the size of the angle. So the angle which was originally x, we know to be 58 degrees. We continue in exactly the same way that we did the last couple of questions. We establish which of the two sides we are using in this question. We have been given the long side, so we know that we have the hypotenuse. The side that we've been asked to find, which is the side that's been labelled y, is the adjacent side. The side that is opposite the angle is not being used here. So we have the A and the H. So again, I would always recommend you write down the word Sokotoa. We are looking for the A and the H. Here they are in the centre. So we know the formula. We know that the cosine of the angle... Now, we don't have to write cos of x now because we actually know the value of the angle. So it's the cosine of 58 degrees. And we know that is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Now, again, I don't have to write hypotenuse because I already have the value. It's 8 centimetres. So I have used Sokotoa. I have established which part of Sokotoa I'm going to use. I know that cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I've written in the angle because it's the cosine of 58, and I've written in the value of the hypotenuse. So cos 58 equals A over 8. To find cos 58, you are simply going to take your scientific calculator, hit the cos button, type in 58 and press equal and you will get naught point it's another long decimal 52991926422 and we know that that equals a over 8 we now have to do a little bit of rearranging a formula because because it's the a that we're wanting so if we move this round the 8 goes to the other side of the formula. Because it's a divide by on this side, it becomes a multiply. So we now have 8 multiplied by 0.52991926422. And that will give us A. And if we do that, we find that A as a length, and again, I'm going to shorten it to one decimal place, is 4.2 centimetres you may be asked to give your answer to one decimal or two decimal places. So, we did things very similarly to the previous questions, but in the formula we put the information that we had. We had the angle, so we were able to find out the cosine. We were looking for the adjacent. We had the hypotenuse, so we were able to put that in there. A little bit of rearranging of formula and we came to 4.2 centimetres. So, certainly not the simplest of topics. 
this is something that needs practice. Start, I think, by learning Sokotoa, recognizing that we divide it into three. And sometimes you do see it written like this just to help you out. You actually see people write it out with some of the letters up raised in the air here. It still says Sokotoa, but this is simply saying that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. But it's learning the word, what the letters are. It's recognizing that you are given a right angle triangle. You need to establish which sides you are working with. Are you being asked to find an angle or are you being asked to find the length of the side? And you use one of these three formulas in order to achieve your aim. And that is it for sin, cos and tan. I hope that was useful. Not the simplest of topics, particularly in the foundation curriculum. However, Sokotoa is your friend and getting the right names for the sides of the triangle. Take it from there. If you have found this useful, please do subscribe to my channel. I have lots of other videos that you might find useful and hopefully I will see you in one of those. Thank you.